Welcome to Papa's Workshop. Today I'm going to be upgrading the X car. Now this has been in operation now for close to four years and virtually have had no maintenance issues whatsoever. Now I do have a regular routine that I go through and check everything, but I've never torn the machine down completely and checked every little detail. So today I'm going to do that. We're going to do the upgrade. In addition, we're going to go ahead and do the complete teardown and check every little detail. So let's get started. I want to give you an overview of everything that you're going to find in this upgrade kit. This is basically going to create almost a brand new CNC machine for you. With the new belts, the new stepper motors, the Z-axis, and the ability to increase the height of the material that you're able to carve with these risers and the strengthening of the sides on the y-axis this is going to be an absolutely fantastic upgrade now before you start any work on this machine to do the upgrade make sure that you unplug it get rid of all power from the machine because you could potentially damage the controller if you don't unplug it by moving the uh, gantry that stepper motors do generate some electrical current and could potentially damage the controller. So please unplug everything and be very gentle as to how you move the gantry so that you don't create that energy that could cause some damage. I like checking out everything and make sure that it's going to work. And this is not going to go down. My waste board is actually a little bit wide. Now I made this waste board. I did not buy this from Inventables and it's a little bit wide. So that is one thing that's gonna to have to get cut down. Now, while I've got the waste board off, I'm gonna go ahead and check all the different screws, make sure that everything works correctly. And if they don't, I'm gonna show you how to fix that too. Now, this is really not part of the upgrade, but it's something that I want to do to make sure that all of these holes, everything works. And of course, I gotta cut off the width of this board looking underneath the CNC machine there is an awful lot of sawdust now all of that sawdust has fallen through the holes over the years but this is what I find most interesting the little threaded insert that one's missing so we're gonna have to put that back in that's a lot of sawdust. But we're gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up. And then we're gonna cut down the waste board so that this will fit in there. I actually consider vacuuming part of maintenance because you never know what you're gonna find in that sawdust. Now it's time to go ahead and check all the screws on this base. And one of the things that you notice, this is loose. You would have never known that if we hadn't taken this apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that back up and I'm gonna go through and check every single screw to make sure that it's tight. As I inspect the back of this, you can see this threaded insert is loose. I have a broken one right here. And then over on this area, I have another broken one. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace these and get them all secured. I'm gonna check every single one of them. After checking all of these, I ended up having to replace about 15 of these threaded inserts because they were either damaged, broken, loose. So I had to correct all of that deficiency and I am really glad that I did. Now here's another one that I just took out and I thought I had damaged it or broken it. But actually, this was defective. There's no threads inside of that. So I went ahead and replaced it and now I have my threaded insert here and it works perfectly. Now this is the one that I had marked that was no longer working. That was the one I had missing and broken. So now I've replaced it and it's working just fine. So that's good. And I'm gonna go through and check every one of these to make sure that they're grabbing, working the way they're supposed to. And if not, this is a good time to be able to fix them. Now these are not part of the upgrade kit. I've had these when I made the original waste board and these were the extra ones that I had. 
Originally, when I made this wasteboard, having it just a little bit wide wasn't a big deal. It just extended over the rail a little bit and that wasn't a problem. Now, with the acrylic panels that need to go in there, it cannot extend over those rails at all. So therefore, I'm going to have to cut it down just a little bit. I'm only going to take about a sixteenth of an inch off of each side. So the total reduction is about an eighth of an inch. That's all that's going to be needed and I'll be able to put those acrylic panels in. Now the wasteboard wouldn't be completed if I didn't take the trim router with the quarter inch round over bit and just go ahead and round over those edges one more time. That way all four sides will match and it'll look almost brand new again, at least on the edges. Now that the wasteboard is completely finished, I'm just going to go ahead and gently insert it back into position and then screw it down again. Now remember, this is not part of the upgrade, but it was sure well worth the time to be able to do this. So I'm just going to screw the wasteboard back into position and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step and actually start the upgrade. Now that I have the wasteboard completely rebuilt, and reinstalled, it's time to go ahead and start working on the Y and the X axis. And the first thing that we need to be able to do is go ahead and just unplug the stepper motors right here on the Y1 and the Y2, as well as the X axis. And then from there, we're gonna loosen these screws and remove the stepper motor, along with removing this and taking the belts off. When you're removing this, you got to be real careful with these wires. But that will just slip out and we can set that aside. Now I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the Y2 axis as well as the X axis. The plug that's on this X axis is a little bit stubborn. So I'm taking a screwdriver and gently applying just a slight bit of pressure on the plug housing itself. You still have to be very, very careful with the wires. But once that's loosened up just a little bit, then you can take your hands and be able to go ahead and lift that out. Now you want to be able to hold on to that plastic housing. Do not grab the wires. And then that'll just go ahead and slip out. In addition to all of the nuts, bolts, and screws that came with the upgrade kit, you still need to be able to save the screws that come out of this machine. You will be reusing quite a few of them. And these stepper motor screws are one example. Now to put the idler wheels back on, you have to do this very specifically. Now I've taken this one off so you can see it better. Well, you're gonna use the existing screw and it's going to slide through the hole. You're going to use the existing spacer that will go on next. And then this is the idler. Now this is a smooth side and then this is the inset. That inset has to go on where you can see it. The smooth flat area goes against the spacer. So it goes on just like that. Now in your kit, you have the M5 washers. You're going to need two of them. You're going to put these two right there. And then you'll use the existing lock nut. And then you'll go ahead and tighten that down. So that's the process and the steps to be able to put those on. Now granted, again, I took this off so you can see it better. You do not have to take it off when you do yours. Everything has been reinstalled with the new parts. The V wheels have been inspected, cleaned, and reinstalled. I'm replacing the risers one at a time and I'm supporting the gantry so that it takes the weight off of the Y axis. Now as I put on the new risers, I'm actually just loosely fitting them right now because I still will have to square the machine. In addition, the vertical portion of the riser needs to be about an eighth of an inch gap between your wasteboard and the riser itself. That way those acrylic panels are going to be able to fit into position easily. And the first thing we need to do is give a real good cleaning on all of this. I want to get all the V wheels completely clean. 
we'll adjust it when we get it back on to the uh, machine. And these wheels actually look brand new doing this. You can see the before and after on the wheels. It looks totally different. Of all the different steps of this entire upgrade, this is probably the most tedious portion of the whole thing. Because, yeah, you have to be able to replace the idler wheels to be able to put the new ones on. And to be able to get inside of this is a little bit of a challenge. Because you have to be able to get that 8 millimeter wrench in there on those nuts to be able to loosen them, to get the old ones off, and to be able to get the new ones back on. And my fingers are real short. They are just not long enough to be able to reach in there and grab everything that I need. Just as we did before, this part goes against the sleeve. We'll put this in first, just like that. Then this sleeve will go in. And this is going to take just a little bit of patience to be able to get this on. And you'll probably drop it a few times. So the spacer's on. And now the wheel will go on. And again, this side is to that spacer. Then the two washers will go on next. So I'm going to use this needle nose plier to slip on the washers. So that's one. This makes it a whole lot easier. And that will be two. And now the little lock nut will go on. And there we go. Now I'll switch over to the eight millimeter wrench to be able to hold that. And then I'll just tighten it in place. Okay, we've got one done, so let's turn around and do the second one. So they, this will go in first. Then we'll slide the spacer in. And I can't do it with my short fingers. I'm trying, but it just doesn't work. So we'll slip that in just like that. Then we'll put the wheel on. Again, that side is to the spacer. And now the two washers. So we'll go back to the pliers. We'll grab the first washer and slip it on. And we'll grab the second one. I'm taking some extra time to show this step because like I said, this is the most tedious step of this entire upgrade. You have to build a work inside of this little compartment and there's not a lot of room. And now for the nut. That short little fingers like mine, you just can't reach in there to put those washers on or this little lock nut. You have to be able to use the pliers or something like this to be able to do it. I found the pliers work pretty good. And if you get past this step, the rest of the upgrade going to be pretty easy. So it's not hard to do. It just takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of planning. And you can get it on quite easily. And we'll put the wrench in there and tighten it up. Now we're going to use the same screws that we did before to put the new stepper motor back on. So I'm just going to slip that in Go ahead and set it down this way. Might be easier to see in the camera. Now just put these in loose to begin with so I can get the alignment and put all four in. Once I have all four in, then I'll go back and tighten them. 
Now the last thing I want to do is actually thoroughly inspect these V-wheels. Now as I was cleaning them, I was looking for any cracks or damage, but now I want to make sure that they're tight. Once this is back onto the uh, gantry, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the V-wheels to be able to get the tension correct with the eccentric nuts. But for now, I just want to make sure that everything is tight. All right, so this is now on. We're going to go ahead and put the gantry back onto the machine, and then we're going to adjust these nuts. I want to go ahead and prepare these stiffeners now. And these are the acrylic sheets that are eighth inch wide. Now we're putting these little small T-nuts in. And we're going to go ahead and put them in all of the acrylic sheets and then put them onto the uh, CNC machine. But these are the little T-nuts that we're working with. What I'm going to do now, we have three that will go across the top. And the little T-nuts will go on just loosely. Just like that. Now the bottom three go in the opposite direction. So they're going to go in this way. And the little T-nut will go on this side. So there you have the first one. So the top three will go in with the little T-nuts on the back side. Then on the bottom, the little button head screws will go on the opposite side with the little T-nuts. Now I want to make sure that this is plumb. And when I have that exactly plumb, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this bottom two screws. Oops. I'm also going to go ahead and make sure that that is exactly plumb also, and it is, so I'm going to tighten these. Now this is still loose. I go ahead and loosen these two screws. Then I'm going to take this. Now this is going to slip and slide, but if I can have those lined up basically where they're supposed to be, that'll make it easier. Square, we're going to tighten this down. Just snug that up. Doesn't have to be real tight or it'll crack the acrylic. There we go. So the first piece is in on this side. This is plumb to the table. Now that we have the Y axis, all plumb and square and tight, we want to do the same thing with the gantry. We want to make sure that it is completely plumb to the wasteboard. Take your time with this. Accuracy is very, very important. I want to be able to square the entire machine now, and I use these two sticks to be able to do that. I'll put a link in the video description below where I show this in detail. But if I do not use the tape measure, if I use the two sticks just like this, go from corner to corner and mark that point. When I flip it to the other diagonal, if there's only one line, then the machine is square. <laughs> if you have two lines, then you're going to have to make an adjustment. So if you look at this up close in the camera, so you get one line, so that machine is perfectly square. Now you take the belts, cut them into thirds, and I want to show you a real easy way to be able to attach them. Now if you look at the y-axis, you take the belt with the teeth facing down, and you just slide it right underneath the wheels. Nothing fancy, nothing hard about this at all. It just slides right underneath, you grab it, you pull it through, and then pull it to the point where you have an equal amount on each end. From there, just grab right underneath the pulley of that stepper motor, pull it up, 
hook it right over the pulley, and then stretch it back out. Just that easy. It's done. All we need to do now is just attach each end. Now the x-axis is a little bit more difficult. Let me show you how to do that one. To put the belt on the x-axis, the easiest way is just go ahead and remove the stepper motor. And then I'm going to show you just how easy it is. Now I'm sure you're wondering, and I'm sure that you might ask, just exactly why did I put this stepper motor on to begin with in that previous step? Well, quite frankly, I like to be able to keep things organized and I don't want to lose any parts. But now I can take this belt, again, with the teeth down and just feed it right through underneath those wheels, be able to grab it on the other end, just like I did before. Now again, this is inside this little compartment. It's a little bit more of a challenge, but it slides through. And then you can grab the end and do the exact same thing. Have an even amount of space on each end and then from there, it's time to be able to pick up that middle section so that we can hook it over a stepper motor. I have a little hook. I can just reach in, grab the belt, and pull the belt up like that, make a loop out of it. And with the loop there, then just simply take the stepper motor, slide it back into position, and with the belt over the pulley. and reattach the screws. So that is not a difficult process at all, and it's much easier just to go ahead and loosen the, and remove the stepper motor. It's time to connect the ends of the belt. On one end, it's fixed, and that's gonna be on the back of the machine. And you're going to take the little plastic sleeve that comes with it and you're going to slip that onto the belt. Then you take the L bracket. There's two slots there. You're going to put the belt through the closest slot to the L portion of the bracket. And then feed it back through, up through that little second slot. And that's the slot closest to the end. Now these teeth will mesh together. And then you'll be able to take that little sleeve and slide it over. So this sleeve, or this retainer clip, actually holds the belt together. And that keeps the teeth meshed, and that helps hold it. And then from there, we're just going to put the screw in and the little uh, lock nut on it, tighten it down, and the fixed end will be completed. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this same process now for the other two belts. On the other end, this is the end that has to be adjusted. Now we're going to take this little sleeve again, slide it over the belt. Once we get that in, just slide it out of the way for the moment and grab the L bracket. The L bracket has the two slots in it. We want to feed the belt through the top, down through that second slot. And this is a slot closest to the bend, to the L portion of the bracket. And then feed it back up through that second notch. Now you need to try to get it adjusted at least somewhat close. You want it to be able to be just tight enough so that you can just barely get that nut screwed on because this is the end that you're going to be tightening the belt with and you need to be able to have a little bit of extra room to be able to tighten it. So try to get this as tight as you can just so you can attach the nut to the screw. To be able to set the tension on the belts, we need to be able to use just a little simple fish scale and hook this into the middle. We'll raise this up one inch and we need to have about three pounds of weight. So I need to go ahead and tighten this. And we have about two and three quarters. I'm going to call that good. Now I want to move over to the Z-axis and focus this attention here. Because this is the last major component that we have to put together. The first thing I'm going to do is relocate the Z-probe. Now in the kit, it comes with a little relocation kit that has the screws, the nuts, and the little bracket that you need to be able to put on. And that's just real simple. Just to be able to attach that with a screw and the um, 
nut and washer. Now that the bracket is installed and tight, I had to move the wire just a little bit to relocate it so that it was long enough. Then it's just a matter of slipping it into the new hole on this relocation bracket, put the washer on it and the nut, and then tighten it down. Now use a little pair of pliers to be able to tighten it down, and that's really all that's necessary. And it's easy to tighten with this little pair of pliers. Now on the old Z-axis, you need to get some parts off of it. The first thing, you need to be able to remove this little micro switch, and we're going to put this over onto the new one. And this takes a little tiny Allen wrench. What I actually used was a sixteenth of an inch Allen wrench to loosen those two screws. And then from there, just transfer it over to the new one. Next is back to the old Z-axis, and I need to get the router mount. To be able to remove it, I need to take those two screws out, and then it will slide off. Now this slides off real easily, and this is the part that you need. But next we also have to go ahead and remove all of the V wheels off of it. Now I save all of these, you never know when I'm going to need one in the future. But remove all four of the V wheels and set those aside. Because all we need is the router mount itself. Now it's time to clean the mount up, make it look new again. And then we'll mount it onto the new Z axis. And there's four screw holes for that. In the upgrade kit, you have a little package of the M5 by 14. There are four screws there that you're going to use to mount this router mount to the Z axis. Now I'll take care to be able to adjust this. There is a little bit of play in this mount so that you can get it perfectly square to the Z axis. That's important because that little bitty variation that you might have will make a difference when you're doing your carve, especially when you're clearing out a pocket it'll leave little ripples into the bottom of the pocket. So that is one way to be able to help prevent that by making sure that you get this as straight as possible. Now that that's done, let's get over to the machine and mount it to the um, machine itself. Now you have two slots on the back of the Z axis and that is for the little button head screws and the T-nuts to be able to slide in and screw it in. Now before we completely tighten this, we need to make sure that it is uh, plumb to the table. Now this is a very important step to do. You want to make sure that it is totally perpendicular to the uh, waste board. And I've got it moved just a little. There we go. Now we already did this earlier, so we know that that's correct. So I have the two screws up here, then I have two screws underneath. Okay, with those tight now, let's double check these. So we have it plumb to the table. Okay, last thing, let's go ahead and drop the router in place. We want to slide that down really as low as you can. And then we have some little small M4 screws that we're reusing. And we're going to tighten that down. Now there's three of them there. So I'll tighten all three of those and that'll hold the router. Now I went ahead and just plugged back in all of the different uh, stepper motors and the limit switches. And now for the final touch, we've got to be able to put the inventable sticker on here for everybody to be able to see. And this is the final crowning moment of being able to have the upgrade completed. Now that's a nice touch. So if you enjoy this portion of the video and being able to do the upgrade, give me a thumbs up. I know I had a good time putting it together. I'm very happy that I'm able to have this upgrade and be able to share it with you. I'm also very glad that I went ahead and did all the extra things by completely tearing the machine apart, checking it all. It makes me feel good and gives me reassurance that this machine is going to last now for years to come. With the routine maintenance that I normally do and with this completely overhaul, if you will, and upgrade, I have the confidence now to know that this is going to be a strong machine, very capable, and I look forward to many different projects being able to carve on this. And if you look over this machine, it absolutely looks like it's a brand new machine. Clean as could be, ready to go, let's test it out and see if it's going to work. Now I went ahead and opened easel, and this is just a brand new project, but I had to go into the machine and then set up the machine. Now I'm using the advanced, 
and here X cards already identified. Yes, we're using the X controller. The rail size is a thousand by thousand. The Z axis, you're going to select this one right here, the Acme threaded rod, and we'll put the correct settings in just a moment. Now I have the Dewalt router, and we confirm those settings. Now the first time that I hit the home button, the router moved in the wrong direction. Instead of going up like it is now, it went down. So that's an easy fix. You can either change it in the software or you can change it by just switching two wires. Now if you look at the back of the controller, this is the Z-axis and there's two sets of wires. This is a pair, the red and white, and here's a pair, the green and the black. Now originally it had these two switched and the router moved in the wrong direction. Instead of going up, it went down. So the simplest way is just change the orientation of the wire. This green one was over here, and I just switched these two wires, and that changes the polarity, and that corrects the issue. The other alternative, you could change it in the software, but to me, this is the easiest solution. And with that corrected, now it moves in the correct direction, and I can complete the home cycle. Now it's still not moving one inch for one inch, but it's going in the right direction. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know I log everything. In the instructions, it gives you the new settings for the 100, 101, and 102. I also have other settings recorded that I changed in the Gerbil for using the laser. So keep everything recorded. To change this now, you go back into the machine under the advanced machine inspector, and this is where you'll find all of the Gerbil settings. Now this is almost impossible to get where you could actually see what's going on, but all you need to do is type up at the very top where it says, please enter, and you can enter that line number. So you hit the dollar sign, 100 equals, and you put in the new settings. And you'll re hit enter, and then you'll repeat that process and do the next line. With all the Gerbil settings recorded, now I went back and homed the machine, and now I can move it. I can test it out. It moves in the correct direction, and hopefully the right distance each time I click the uh, button. So I can move on the X, Y, and the Z axis. With that part done, we need to verify that it's actually calibrated. Are these new settings exactly what's needed for this machine? And to do that, I grabbed the ruler with the millimeters marked on it, lay that out on the x-axis, and I just had a starting point of 300 millimeters. From there, I could move over, let's say 10 millimeters, and I could repeat that and move this as far as I wanted to. And I wanted to do it in small increments just to see how the machine stopped and started, and if it actually stopped and started where it was supposed to. Now in easel, you could select 100 millimeters, 200 millimeters, and move it the whole distance at once, but I chose not to. But as I move back to the original starting point, it's exactly where it's supposed to be. Then I rotated, and we're going to repeat this same exact exercise on the y-axis. Now I have a dedicated video on calibration, and I'll link that into the description below. So if you need to make changes, you can make changes with this video and know exactly the process on how to do it. But for the settings that they gave in the instructions, it worked perfect. The z-axis is a little bit more of a challenge because I actually set up a knife blade on my tape measure so that I can move it 10 millimeters at a time. Well, it's ready for action, all calibrated and completed. All right, we got a new feature added in easel. It's no longer just one line here. We now have two lines, X, Y line, and one for the Z. So you can control the difference in the heights depending on the axis that you want. And this is one that I love. No longer do you have to move just one inch at a time. Now you can type in, let's say five inches, and be able to hit this and away it goes. It moves five inches. You can type in any amount that you want. That is absolutely fantastic, long overdue. I applaud the Inventables team for adding this information in here.